All right, let's take a look at the preferences menu and there are a lot of tabs here. There's a lot of settings that you can alter. I'm not going to go through every one of them, but there are some things you need to know. Mostly the general tab and this is where you're going to set up just about every project that you have. Some of these you can leave the way they are. Some of them you'll need to change every time you do a project depending on the kind of work you do. Let's go first here at this general options box. The default interpolation is the one that's going to come up whenever you change a parameter. Uh, I think by default it's ease in and out. If you know you're going to be doing a lot of linear interpolations in your project, set this to linear. Every time you make a change to a parameter, it'll put that linear interpolation in there automatically. This toggle interpolation is the interpolation that'll come up if you option click on Mac or alt click in Windows in the interpolation box. I really don't use this because I find it pretty easy to just click the interpolation box and get the entire menu. It's very quick and very easy to do that. But if you want to, it's here so you can select a toggle interpolation and you can specify which one you want here. The view time, this is how you're going to see your time in your timeline. Would you like to see absolute time codes, which is hours, minutes, seconds, frames? Would you like to see absolute frames, which is from 0 to 90, for example, in a 3 second effect? Or do you want to see your program time code, which is time code that's fed from your host? Right now I have Red open as a standalone engine, so I don't have a host feeding time code to the program right now, and that's why it's ghosted out. These three options are here for you under the view time menu. Keep keyframe time is very, very interesting and very, very useful. Let me get out of here and show you. I'm going to delete these keyframes here. Say I've got a one second effect. I'm going to put a keyframe at 10 frames and I'm going to put a keyframe at 15 frames. So you see I've got one here to start at zero one at 10 frames and one at 15 frames. Now I'm going to change this to three seconds and look what happens to my keyframes. They move. They're, not, they're no longer at 10 frames and 15 frames, but they moved relatively in, in relative uh, space to the duration of the effect. Now if I don't want that to happen, I can undo that, go up here to preferences keep keyframe time and that's going to keep them exactly where they are no matter how much I add to the duration of the timeline. You see I still made it three seconds these are still at 10 and 15 frames so that is how you do that if you find yourself needing two extra seconds at the end of your effect and you don't want to move any of your keyframes that's the way you do it. You just go ahead and check keep keyframe time. Uh, I'm going to move on to project options. This is where you set up uh, your project. Are you going to be using an NTSC DV project? Are you working in uh, HDTV? Are you working for the web for streaming video? Do you have some kind of custom size that you want to do? Maybe you're working in PAL. These are all options here in your project options and if you need to you can select custom size and enter something here including frames per second. The video aspect ratio, you can do a 16.9, you can do the 4.3, or you can do square pixels. That's all up to you. Timeline options show velocity curves. This is where you're going to get a visual representation of the interpolations and the parameter changes in your timeline. That's if you use the twirlies. You can sometimes see the changes that are happening and some people like that. Earlier I showed you the grid and I said you could set the grid cells in the preferences window well here it is, horizontal 8, vertical 6, again 4, 3, and uh, that's where you can set your grid cells. I'm going to move on now to interface. A lot of this stuff is self-explanatory. Uh, wait, one more thing, preview to RAM options. If you don't have a lot of RAM, you can change this to a ratio, say 5 to 1, where for every 5 frames to RAM, one goes to your hard disk. That should help it a little bit, but I think for the most part people who have these kind of programs are usually stacked with some RAM so hopefully you've got enough to keep it going. Let's move on now to interface and what I want to show you here is that basically this is how your program is going to behave. Uh, you saw the favorite filters buttons in the timeline. Uh, let me get out of here. In the timeline down here you see all these buttons. You've got favorite filters um, you've got your favorite motion filter, your favorite time filter, 
favorite lighting filter, favorite color filter. See, all those are right there for you to use, but you have to set them up here. Um, it's going to add default favorites, but you know, blur, basic blur may not be your favorite blur filter. It may be the Gaussian blur. So this is where you set those up if you're going to use those fast menus. Import media. If you've got to bring some video in or some media in, any kind of media, you can tell it what, what's going to come here. And uh, this way it'll know what's coming in and treat it as such. Export media. Pretty self-explanatory. You've got four different settings that you can use. And you can uh, select different options in each one of those. So you can set those up for yourself. Preview, this is very important because this is where you set up your external monitor. If you've got an external monitor, a client monitor, you can set it up here. Also, it does accept in version 3 Microsoft DV camera or VCR, which includes like the Canopus ADVC100, or maybe you just want to shoot it out to your camera, and then you've got a RCA into a TV monitor from there. That's, that's where you'll select that. So that's how you set up your monitor, and you won't be able to see anything until you set that up because the default is none. And uh, so that's very important. Got to do that. Timeline colors. You can basically change the timeline the way you want it to look. Background. Earlier I showed you the checkerboard. And the default setting for the background is checkerboard in the composite window. However, if you'd like a background color, here's where you select what it is. By default, it's black, but you can select any color you want. I think I told you that earlier. Uh, let's see, render, here's where you can test your OpenGL hardware. Right now I have OpenGL acceleration off. Here's where you can test it. Um, it'll give you some little message. However, I don't really think that this is all the time useful. It may give you a message and it may tell you, for example, that your system is not capable of running the, the OpenGL functions in the programs, but sometimes that's not exactly accurate. And if you go ahead and turn it on, it'll let you run the OpenGL. Um, so don't trust this completely. You can test your OpenGL hardware. If it says you pass, well, fantastic, congratulations. If it says your hardware failed, uh, take it with a grain of salt and go ahead and try anyway. Local project. Um, one thing that's very important in here is this one, two, one deflickering. If you have a rolling title that rolls from, say, bottom to top, sometimes you can get a flicker in those, and this will help deflicker that flicker. It adds a little vertical blur, so you can check that there. And that's basically the preferences settings. You can go through and check them out yourself and click some windows and see what happens. And if you find that you've gotten yourself in trouble and your program's doing something that you don't want it to do, it's no problem. You can come down here to factory settings or reset tab. You can reset just the tab or the whole entire preferences settings by just hitting factory settings. That should get everything back to the way they need to be. So that's the preferences window, and uh, there's a lot of important stuff in there. Keep it in mind, if you need to change the aspect ratio of your project, you need to change the size, the scale of your project, the frames per second, just about anything you want that has to do with the way the program functions is going to be in this preferences menu somewhere, so don't forget it's here.